five home improvement projects that really pay off. And this video is not only for those of you who are thinking about selling your home in the near future because of that. Every homeowner will find this video useful. I promise you that. So if you are not feeling like a big spender these days, you should check out the rewards of small home improvements. Because how can myths sound so right yet still be wrong? Take the one that says homeowners need to do a big remodeling project, think HGTV gut rehab, to get a worthwhile return on investment or happiness. Not necessarily, guys. According to the most recent National Association of Realtors Remodeling Impact Report, that report found that homeowners can get payback and joy from several smaller, lower dollar value home improvement projects. And we're going to talk about those projects in this video. So that's good news for the one in five millennials and Gen Xers who had to compromise on the house they bought in 2021, right? Ditto for potential buyers whose offers were rejected and who are staying put for now. They can also make improvements to their homes. So if you're coping with inflation, but eyeing a home improvement, a small remodel is worth considering. So small projects are suited to do it yourself, which can save you cash. And now research showed that 10% of young millennials between the ages of 23 and 31 want a fixer upper home where they can work on do-it-yourself projects. The supply chain is also cooperating kind of as some products used to, in renovation are coming back into the market and at a little bit more affordable price, right? So of course, kitchen and bathroom makeovers will always have a place in our hearts but also in our wallets, right? So the following five high-performing project list, projects listed in the NAR report are less expensive, though admittedly less exciting options. But then again, there is nothing woohoo about your scratched and dinged hardwood floors or having your utility bill outpace your grocery bills, right? So listen up. Number one is hardwood flooring refinish or replacement. Interest in hardwood floors was definitely the headline from this year's report. In fact, Refinishing hardwood floors grabbed the top spot for interior remodeling projects that bring the highest return. So remodelers estimated the cost of $3,400 and realtors estimated the value recovered at $5,000. So it's a whopping 147% return. Consumers gave the project a joy score of 10 out of 10. And on top of that, 100% of consumers surveyed said they want to be at home more after finishing the project. For 64% of consumers, the most important benefits were durable and long-lasting results and materials, right? So with hardwood floors, you get a lot of bang for your back and they are not that expensive. And people really like them, which I actually see every day when I'm showing homes to my buyers. The floors are usually the first thing they notice upon entering a house. So post-pandemic, homeowners are still concerned about cleanliness and hardwood floors are relatively easy to clean. Plus, with increased pet adoption, we all know that this, this happened during pandemic, homeowners prefer surfaces that are less likely to stain or retain odors, okay? So refinishing makes sense when everyday life has left scuffs, dents, dullness, and scratches. All unwanted reminders of spills, accidents, dragged furniture, and ground in dirt from food traffic, okay? Your options for refinishing will depend on whether the coating or the wood itself is damaged. So the deeper the damage, the higher the refinishing cost, obviously, right? So new wood flooring snagged the second highest score for interior projects with $5,500 cost and $6,500 cost recovery, netting 118% in value recovered. And although it's a bigger investment than refinishing, new flooring will let you opt for the hardwood and finish you prefer. And that will affect the floor's durability and appearance. And that's also what it's very appealing to potential buyers. Number two is an insulation upgrade, something you might not expect here, right? So buyers want to cut their energy costs where they can, and more and more consumers want a home that's energy efficient. I see it all the time. They want their utility costs cut and efficient, and they want efficient heating and cooling. But the typical home they are purchasing is 29 years old and quite dated, so it may not have good insulation, but people actually pay attention to this during touring homes. So making this home improvement could factor into more than comfort level and energy prices by appealing to buyers when you are ready to sell. So in a survey of realtors, 63% said promoting energy efficiency in listings was very or at least somewhat valuable. And that's in line with preferences of home buyers who rank the importance of heating, cooling and insulation at seven out of 10. So it's important to them, right? So if you are still on the fence, consider that an insulation upgrade at an average cost of 2,500 is relatively inexpensive, right? And it recovers 2,500 for a break even. So the joy score of 10 is worth shouting about, definitely. And you can tackle an insulation upgrade as a do-it-yourself project because some can be done in a short 15 minutes. Installing certain types of insulation materials like fiberglass and mineral wool are especially do-it-yourself 
evolve according to the North American Insulation Manufacturers Association, right? But spray foam and some other insulation types require a professional, which also is going to be more expensive. So the Department of Energy offers advice like this. The maximum thermal performance or R value of insulation greatly depends on how well it's installed. So it pays to stick within your skill level. And if you don't have the skill level, don't do it yourself. Just hire a professional to do it. It's going to be worth in the long run. So number three is a closet renovation. And I know closets are extremely important when I tour the home with my clients. Consumer surveyed took on a closet upgrade for two main reasons to add features and improve flippability and to improve organization and storage. And this update averaged $6,000, costing more than some of the other smaller projects, but the cost recovery was substantial at $5,000 or 83%. So on the satisfaction side, more than three fourths of consumers, 79%, said that now that they've remodeled, they want to be at home more. Almost half said the most important result for them was greater functionality and livability. And the joy score, another perfect 10. Closets are using something like a Legos approach when remodeled, according to the pros. You take the basic building blocks like drawers, hangers, hampers, shelves, but you use them differently and add to them. So people want storage for their particular needs. So for example, if you have 100 pairs of shoes, you need creative ways to deal with shoe storage. For example, shoe boxes, slanted shoe shelves, straight shoe shelves, shoe cubbies, and so on and so forth. But I know from experience that actually closets and closet organization is very important to potential buyers. So many times we enter the home, we open the closet and my buyers say, oh my goodness, I'm going to buy this house because these people are so organized and the closet is like has little cubbies and shelving and hangers, everything folded nicely and neatly. It really speaks to the buyers. Believe me. Number four on our list is add or upgrade laundry area. Laundry wrangling is more of a chore if you don't have enough workspace or if you're missing certain features like a countertop or a sink. So consumers in the survey said they focus on laundry room improvements to add features and improve livability or because they had just moved into their home and wanted to customize it. Okay, so 60% said the most important result was better functionality and livability. So they met their goal and that's why the overall joy score on the laundry was 9.5 out of 10, which is pretty good, right? So laundry room remodeling costs between four to $12,000 on a national basis average. And why the range is so broad? Because laundry rooms can be located in different parts of the home. They can vary in size and shape. So most people pay around $7,000 for a 35 square foot laundry room that includes mid-range upper and lower cabinets, a laminate countertop and front loading appliances. So nothing like crazy here, right? Of course, you can upgrade an existing laundry room or space by adding a la carte features that are kind of more expensive. So popular add-ons include stock or custom cabinets, a sink, countertops for workspace, good lighting and durable flooring. And some of the fancier options include units for hand hanging wet items like t-shirts so they can drip into the sink and racks that pull out of drawers for drying fine woolens. Okay, it's very fancy. So don't forget about small do-it-yourself improvements like painting walls or cabinets and adding lighting in your laundry room. They will help you customize the space. So you might almost enjoy doing laundry. And by the way, if when you're thinking about selling, it might be more appealing to potential buyers because we all have to do our laundry after all, right? Number five on our list is paint one interior room. Interesting, right? So painting an interior room is one of the most do-it-yourself friendly small home improvement projects that you can do. And there is nothing like to freshen a room or fix a quirk or two. And more than half of the consumers in the survey chose it because they wanted a change. <laughs> and more than a quarter wanted to upgrade worn out surfaces, finishes and materials. Most of us fit into one of or both of these groups, right? So beauty and aesthetics were the most important results consumers mentioned. And because of that, the joy score on this kind of project is 10 out of 10. I'm not surprised about that, right? So. Hiring a professional to paint a room can cost between $990 to $1,320 on a national basis. And the variation stems from the type of room and its square footage plus the type of finish. So with practice and a little advice, even a novice do-it-yourselfer can get great results. If you are stuck on what colors to pick, there's more advice out there than you can shake a paintbrush at. Most major paint manufacturers have released a color or palette of the year for 2023. You can find them in Home Depot. If you want to follow your own preferences, but would like a little guidance, you can get tips about how to choose complementary colors you like over the long term, right? Complementary or maybe more neutral colors, especially if thinking about selling in the near future. 
So the NAR remodeling survey also includes info for the big projects like bathroom and kitchen renos and basement and attic conversions to living areas. But depending on your priorities and budget, a smaller upgrade may make you happy and bring a healthy return and might appeal to potential buyers who really pay attention to things like that. And believe me, people pay attention to things like that because I see it all the time with my buyers. So if you are on the fence about what improvements to make to your home before we list it, let's talk because as always, I am here to help. Now, please share this video with anyone who needs this and subscribe and follow for more. And as always, thanks for watching.